Good morning everyone. It's uh, 6 30 in the morning. So I've decided that I'm gonna walk the last two kilometers of the legendary and historic caribou road. Yeah so basically I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna see any uh, uh, wildlife, any moose, elks, uh, black bears or polar bears. I'm kidding, I don't think we're gonna see polar bears here. Otherwise, that's gonna be uh, like winning the lottery tickets. But anyways, I'm all by myself. And uh, you know one of the tactics I use while uh, walking alone in the wilderness is filming videos like this and just talk about random stuff. Yeah, so I guess I will see you at the end of the caribou road. To be honest, at the beginning of the walk, I thought I was in for a real adventure. These seemingly abandoned huts certainly brought me all the way back to the age of gold rush, at least for a while. Then the cables appeared, so did modern houses. Uh, Doc, am I back to the future? Yeah, so the uh, uh, smoky situation uh, still, uh, still around. I can still smell uh, charcoal in the air. It's such a shame that uh, we're right now in the middle of a uh, wildfire. I can totally imagine how beautiful this place could be without all the wildfire smoke. Yeah, so we'll just uh, keep going. And, uh, oh my gosh, I see, I see it. I see the end of the caribou road. But wait, why does a ghost town have lights in there? It turns out that this ghost town that was supposed to be abandoned 60 years ago, today has not only lights. There was also a huge parking lot and cabins where tourists like you and I can stay overnight. Without further ado, Mesdames et Messieurs, welcome to Barkerville, the end of the historic Caribou Road. All right, so I am right now at the real end of the road, the final destination if you follow the historic Caribou Road. This is Barkerville. So yeah, so today Barkerville is uh, it's pretty much like a historic park. So that means, uh, well, you have to pay admission to get in. There is also an hour of operations. Right now it's barely 7 a.m. So that means nobody's here yet, other than myself and the staff who had to prepare for the opening of the park. I'm just gonna go back to the campground. I'm gonna go grab some breakfast, maybe at Wells, and then I will be back when the park opens today. I chose a back road to go back to the campground. Not far from Barkerville, there was the town's cemetery. These are the final resting places of the last real residents of this now tourist attraction. Every single situation, there is a best scene scenario and a worst scene scenario. The best scene scenario was I saw a path going to the back of the campground and that would connect to the back road I was walking on. 
that will provide a shortcut to my walk back to the campground. The worst thing scenario was I got lost in the middle of nowhere. Oh, this is bad news. I think I got lost. Looks like the oh, back of the road couldn't take me back to the campsite. So I am just uh, oh, finding my own way back to the campsite. Yeah, so I just came back to the main road. Yeah, the so-called night nice scenery was actually indeed a marsh. Yeah, I could see campsite from the place, but I was slowly moving in. I realized the ground was sinking. Then I saw a creek. So I figured if I kept going, I might just sink in there. And uh, well, nobody could help me. And then I came all the way back, not by the same road. Well, because there was no road, you know, I was just uh, cutting through the, the forest. But good thing is that in this area, there are several sheds or uh, you know, empty land you can use as a reference point. Otherwise, it did feel uh, pretty bad getting lost in the woods. So don't be an idiot. Don't be like Sayurin Boche. Try your best to follow the way. Don't cut corners. Don't try ways that you're not familiar with. So I've made it back to the campsite safely. So I'm just gonna get some water before we head to uh, Wells for breakfast and then afterwards Barkerville. It's kind of strange that the only drinking water I could find at the campsite was from an old style well. Which I certainly had to learn how to use from other happy campers. Alright, now let's get to Barkerville. Yeah, so I'm just curious, is that where the name uh, Wells come from? There's so many Wells in the area. Yeah, folks, I just came back to Wells. So this time I drove a little bit in and uh, turns out that uh, there's a whole little uh, quaint town from the Gold Rush era that's uh, still here. So maybe I'll uh, quickly show you around and then I'll go grab breakfast and then head to Barkerville. So why didn't I head to the pub where I had dinner the day before for breakfast? I mean, come on, isn't the answer obvious? They had a rotty night. Who still has the energy to serve you breakfast? By the way, the house behind me is for sale. Anybody wanna buy it? Anyways, don't you find some of these buildings awfully familiar? Yeah, look at the sign over there. It says Dawson Street. <laughs> How ironic. This place did remind me of Dawson City in Yukon at first. The only exception is that the so-called ghost town Dawson City today is a national historic site and receives funding from the Canadian government. Whereas Wells, British Columbia is pretty much being left there to die on its own. And what is the outcome? A real, authentic ghost town. And that might not be accurate. Maybe let's call it a town on life support. Ironically, the economy of Wells today depends on another ghost town, Barkerville. Like mentioned in the previous episode, lots of businesses in Wells either closed their doors or listed for sale. Guess what? So far I couldn't find any places that was serving breakfast. Oh, there's one last place, the only hotel in Wells. Wish me luck. Well, I just finished touring the town of Wells, looking for places for breakfast. Unfortunately, there isn't any. I went into the hotel and it turns out, uh, yeah, they only offer continental breakfast for hotels only. 
do have a menu, but they don't have a cook today. So let's just go to Barker Road then. Now we're in Barkerville. Don't underestimate this place. It has everything. Although uh, run by people from the 1800s, it seems. It has a post office, a law office, an ironsmith shop, and a full service restaurant. So there is actually a full service restaurant behind me. I'm gonna actually go in there and uh, grab some breakfast. Surprisingly, the restaurant does accept credit cards for payment. There you get to see people with 21st century clothing served by people with 19th century clothing. The foods they serve there are fresh and taste good even by 21st century standards. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's uh, quite ironic that uh, in Wales, a city uh, where real people live, uh, there wasn't a single um, place that serves breakfast, whereas in Barkerville, this is pretty much a big town, um, <laughs> there's a full service restaurant. Finally, the breakfast problem has been resolved. That means we're ready to discover Barkerville. In the next episode, we'll explore this modern day ghost town plus tourist attraction together. Is it worth traveling all that far just for visiting this place? Stay tuned.